welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Um, I'm actually the author of a few Tudor History books, including On This Day in Tudor History, which has served as the inspiration for these daily talks, bringing you tidbits from uh, the Tudor period. So, I've been doing the past couple of days, I've been giving you information on the prayer book rebellion from King Edward VI reign. But today we're going to go right back to the start of things, right back to the very uh, roots of the, uh, the Tudor dynasty. But on this day in Tudor history, Sunday the 7th of August 1485, Henry Tudor, who of course was the future King Henry VII, son of Lady Margaret Beaufort and son of the late Edmund Tudor, Earl of Richmond, came unto Wales. So that's a quote, that's actually, he was said to come unto Wales, landing at Mill Bay. Now Henry had left Harfleur in France where he'd been in exile in Brittany on the 1st of August 1485. He was, uh, he'd sailed with a force of French mercenaries and English exiles, his supporters who'd also you know, been in exile with him over there. His intention was to claim the throne of England. Um, of course, King Richard III was on the throne at the time, so Henry was determined to depose Richard and take the throne. Henry dropped anchor at Mill Bay near Milford Haven in Wales. Polydor Virgil recorded his return from exile, writing, he loosed from the mouth of the Seine, with 2,000 only of armed men and a few ships, the calends of August, and with a soft southern wind. The weather being very fair, he came unto Wales the seventh day after, a little before sunset, where, entering the haven called Milford, and forthwith going a land, he took first a place, the name whereof is Dale, where he heard that certain companies of his adversaries had had their stations the winter bypassed to have kept him from landing. Chronicler Robert Fabian recorded that on disembarking at Mill Bay, Henry knelt on the beach and recited the psalm, Judge me, O God, and favour my cause. He then kissed the ground meekly and reverently, made the sign of a cross upon him, and then commanded such as were about him boldly in the name of God and St George to set forward. Virgil states that from thence departing in the break of day, he went to Haverford, which is a town not 10 miles from Dale, where he was received with great goodwill of all men, and the same he did with such celerity as that he was present and spoken of all at once. Henry and his force then set off bound for the city of London. They went marching through Wales and the marches and gathered support on their journey. Now, although, as I said, they were aiming for the city of London, they actually encountered King Richard III and his forces before that uh, on the way in Leicestershire. And of course, as you know, on the 22nd of August 1485, the forces of Henry Tudor and King Richard III clashed at the Battle of Bosworth Field, um, a site that's near the town of Market Bosworth in Leicestershire. King Richard was killed during the battle and Henry Tudor became King Henry VII, founding the Tudor dynasty on the throne of England. And Henry VII ruled until his death in April 1509 and was able to pass the throne successfully on to his second son, who became that iconic king that we all know and perhaps don't love, King Henry VIII. So I just wanted to share that uh, on this day in history event with you today because of course that is the start, the very start of the Tudor dynasty. Obviously Henry uh, Tudor landing is slightly before uh, the Tudor dynasty but obviously it led to uh, that battle of Bosworth between the king who was on the throne and the man who wanted that throne. So uh, the very roots of the Tudor dynasty. 
Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos uh, go live. Uh, but you know I'm going to be back tomorrow with uh, another Tudor goodie for you and I will see you then. Take care. Bye bye.